inevitable due to the fractional reserve practice, but also because of the fact that the money that the bank loaned to you didn't even legally exist in the first place. Yeah, that's right. The money didn't exist. Just like the money that they loan to students all over the world every single day to go to school. They loan these students money and the money that they are loaning them is from a bank. The money from that bank is created out of thin air or nothing or debt, which is nothing. And debt and interest is where the banks recap more money, but really initially money is created from nothing, thin air. So that money is created from thin air. It's put into a centralized banking system or a big bank and then it's broken down into smaller banks and then once it's broken into smaller banks those banks give out loans to the lending agencies or the people like Sally Mae and them who give out student loans they so the banks cover the loans that are being taken from the students for school and they're loaning students money that's money that's just been transferred a bunch of times but it's all been created out of thin air but when the student gets out of school they have to pay in labor rather than pay something that they've created out of thin air. And not only is this money that is being loaned fake money, but the money that's being loaned is also being loaned to inadequate lenders or lendees. And that meaning is essentially that people who are getting loans for student loans are not adequate to be getting the loans that they are receiving. People who are receiving loans for student loans do not have a substantial credit worthiness to be getting loans as high as they are getting them. For instance, I have a $30,000 loan and I should have only been approved for maybe a $1,000 loan or 10000 at max. There's people who owe hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans, doctors and stuff. There's a possibility they're never going to be able to catch up and be able to afford to pay that off. It would take them years and years of manual labor to even come close. And that's basically the gist of this presentation is I want you to realize that Money is created out of thin air and the money is being loaned to students and also students are being loaned money with a minimal credit worthiness or financial IQ to, for that matter. This is a court case involving a similar scenario and I think it could help this case. So um, hear me out, and if you have any questions, please contact me. In 1969, there was a Minnesota court case involving a man named Jerome Daly, who was challenging the foreclosure of his home by the bank, which provided the loan to purchase it. His argument was that the mortgage contract required both parties, being he and the bank, each put up a legitimate form of property for the exchange. In legal language, this is called consideration. Mr. Daly explained that the money was, in fact, not the property of the bank, for it was created out of nothing as soon as the loan agreement was signed. Remember what modern money mechanics stated about loans? What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits. Reserves are unchanged by the loan transactions, but deposit credits constitute new additions to the total deposits of the banking system. In other words, the money doesn't come out of their existing assets. 
The bank is simply inventing it, putting up nothing of its own, except for a theoretical liability on paper. As the court case progressed, the bank's president, Mr. Morgan, took the stand, and in the judge's personal memorandum, he recalled that the plaintiff, bank's president, admitted that, in combination with the Federal Reserve Bank, did create the money and credit upon its books by bookkeeping entry. The money and credit first came into existence when they created it. Mr. Morgan admitted that no United States law or statute existed which gave him the right to do this. A lawful consideration must exist and be tendered to support the note. The jury found that there was no lawful consideration and I agree. He also poetically added, only God can create something of value out of nothing. Only God can create something out of nothing. So, the schools think they're God, the banks think they're God, the big banks think they're God, the Federal Reserve thinks it's God, but they're not, and we're not. So, technically, since you're not, I'm not, and they're not, and we're not, then I'm non Neg are non let's see what's the word I want to use non responsible for the amount accrued on behalf of my name in student loan debt and other debt via credit card or schooling because the money that I was borrowed was not even legitimate money in the first place. And what constitutes as legitimate money is money that's been through the monetary system and the economy, not something that's been just created out of thin air. Once it's been circulated, it's been officially proven real money, but since it's not, it's non-legitimate fake money so I don't have to pay my student loan debts or I shouldn't have to pay my student loan debts because I didn't have the financial or psychological IQ and aptitude at the time of my loan to take the amount of the loan that I was received and now it's put myself in financial hardship, stress, anxiety, depression, um, near suicide. And all of this simply because of debt that was created for me out of nothing to them. They traded me debt and I essentially didn't give them nothing. So we made a deal where they were going to give me money and I was going to give them a promissory note. Well, that backfired. And they gave me debt, but their debt that they gave me or the loan that they gave me was not legitimate funds in the first place. It was money that they borrowed from the bank, which the money borrowed from the bank was created out of thin air anyways. So why would I have to use my hourly labor to pay that off when their money wasn't created like that? Their money was created simply by changing numbers on a computer. So I don't think that a life's worth of my work or billions of hours of students labor is equivalent to changing some numbers on a computer to loan these kids money if the federal reserve was to simply say they're going to put another 10 trillion dollars into the economy it wouldn't be nothing but for students to earn 10 trillion dollars worth of hourly labor it would take thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours who is really being deceived here